Hi again. In um, this video lecture, we are going to talk about linearization and Taylor's approximation theorem. So far, we have been doing the following procedure. We are given a dynamical system which has certain input variables u and state variables x. Then, using fundamental principles of science and engineering, such as Newton's laws, Kirchhoff's laws, Hooke's law, and so on, we are able to derive differential equations that describe the dynamic relationship between input and state variables. These differential equations, or sometimes integral differential equations, can be written in a state space representation. Now, in most cases, the differential equations that we derive from this procedure are too difficult to work with, and they evade further mathematical analysis, or at least it's not easy to work with such equations. But there is a particular subclass of differential equations that is easier to work with. These are the so-called linear differential equations. They are the so-called, the so to speak, easy ones, in contrast to all other ones which are considered more difficult. So these easy differential equations, the linear ones, are the ones that we can write in the following form. We have a linear combination of state variables and, and their derivatives, as well as a linear combination of input variables and their derivatives. I have written it here for the case we have only one state variable and one input variable. Examples of such easy linear equations are the following. So this equation is a linear equation. This simple equation is again a linear equation, but pay attention here. This equation technically is not a linear one because what we have written here, the definition of a linear differential equation has no constant terms. There is no plus constant over there. This is not a linear equation. Such equations, however, we can tell that they might not be linear, but this must be something very simple. These equations are called affine. And albeit not techni technically not linear, there is a trick that with a simple change of variables, we can write them as we can write them in this form of linear equations. So there is no, um, it's not a problem when we encounter such equations. Now, all other equations that might involve terms of the form of the type sine of x, we have encountered such equations. For example, if you watch again the video on uh, the inverted pendulum equations, we had some sines and cosines in uh, those equations. So sines or x squared or x dot squared and so on, any equations that involve such terms are the difficult ones, are nonlinear equations. Thankfully, there is a result that allow, allows us to approximate such difficult nonlinear equations by linear ones. And this is Taylor's approximation theorem. Let's write it down. So this is Taylor's approximation theorem, one of the most fascinating results that we will be dealing with. Taylor's theorem states the following. If we have a function of one variable that is k times differentiable at a point x0, so we have a function that at a point is sufficiently smooth, then this function can be approximated around this point by a polynomial of uh, degree k. And the approximation is given by the following formula. It is a formula, it is a polynomial from here to here, which involves the function and its derivatives up to order k, the first, the second derivative, and so on, and terms of the form x minus x0, x minus x0 squared, third power, and so on, up to x minus x0 to the k power. And we also see here that the first term is divided by 1, then 2 factorial, 3 factorial, up to k factorial. In case you don't remember the factorial of an integer number k, k factorial, is 1 times 2 times 3, etc. times k. For example, 3 factorial 
is 1 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. So this is the approximation of function f plus an approximation error, which becomes small when um, becomes small when we go close to x0. So this is an approximation which is valid when x is close to x0. I will explain, I will say a few things about the approximation error uh, in uh, just a moment. But let's first gain some intuition, some understanding of uh, what the theorem says here. So if I keep k equals 1, if my function is differentiable, of course, at the point x0, so I will use the theorem from this point up to this point with k equals 1, then the theorem allows me to approximate it at this point with a line. So we have a linear approximation. We can approximate the function f with a line locally, which is, by the way, this is the tangent of the graph of f. If I use k equals 2, and I use the theorem from here to here, then I can approximate the function close to x0 by a second order polynomial. So a function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, like a parabola. I can use a parabola to approximate my function at this point. And so on and so forth. If I use a k order approximation, a high order approximation, I give more degrees of freedom, more flexibility to the approximation function, to the approximating polynomial, and it makes sense to assume that I can somehow approximate my function better, but always close to that point x0. The theorem is not over yet. It states three important facts about this approximation error. The first one is that the approximation error converges to zero as x goes close to x0. Okay, it makes sense. And this is what we mean when we say that this approximation is valid close to uh, x0. The second thing we need to know about the approximation error is uh, an indication, an estimation of how fast it converges to zero. And the theorem states that it does converge to zero much faster than x minus x0 to the k power. Now, absolute value of x minus x0 to the power k. Now, what much faster means Mathematically, there is a more rigorous way to, to write this down, but you can look it up in the lecture notes. For now, let's keep that it converges much faster than x minus x0 to the k power. And the third thing is that if we know that the function is k plus 1 times differentiable, So again, if we know that the function is k plus 1 times differentiable, then we know that the approximation error goes to 0 at the speed of x minus x0 to the k plus 1 power. Again, I will not state this absolutely rigorously, but you can find it in the lecture notes, what, what this means and how we can write it properly. Now let's solve a few exercises to understand how to use this theorem in practice. Now, this is a very nice exercise. Not only will we use Taylor's approximation theorem to find a polynomial approximation of this trigonometric function close to a given point, but also there is an application here, which is very interesting. We will use this theorem to derive an estimation, an estimate of sine of 0.1 without using a calculator. Now, using a calculator, just to verify the, uh, the result that we will arrive at, I calculated that the sine of 0 0.1 is given by this number. Let's see now, using Taylor's approximation theorem, up to k equals 3. Let us do k equals 1, 2, and 3, and see how many digits we can recover from this accurate uh, number over here. So let's get started. First of all, what we're trying to do is we have the, fi the function 
we have the function sine of x. We will first approximate it by a line at point x0 equals 0. And then we will approximate it by a second and a third order polynomial. The approximation formula given by Taylor's theorem is the following. f of x, the theorem states, is approximately equal Now, if I use x0 equals 0, so all these terms become 0, this equation can be written as follows. Again, up to order k, and don't forget that this is an approximation which holds for x close to 0. Now, all we need to do to use this formula in this exercise is to find these values. So, if we can compute the value of the function and its derivatives at zero, then we can apply the theorem. This is the function. This is the first derivative. The second derivative the third derivative and so on. The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and, in, and now the derivative of minus sine is minus cosine, and you can keep doing that actually, and uh, com compute the fourth, fifth, and so on derivatives of this function. Now we have the four values we were looking for, namely the value of the function at 0 is equal to 0, the derivative is equal to 1, the second derivative is 0, and the third derivative is minus 1. We can use these values we were looking for, we can plug them in uh, the approximation equation of Taylor's theorem, and we can obtain that our function, sine of x, is approximately equal x minus x to the third power divided by 3 factorial. The factorial of 3 is 6. So this is the third order approximation of sine. Now, to make it a little clearer, if we use k equals 1, then sine of x is approximately equal to x for x close to 0. If we use k equals 2, it is the same exactly. And if we use k equals 3, this is the approximation formula. So we have answered the question up to here. What is the polynomial approximation of function sine of x is equal, f of x is equal to sine? This is the answer. And now what about sine of 0 0.1? We have these approximation equations, and we can use them to approximate this value. If we use the first approximation formula that sine of x is approximately equal to x, then we must say here that sine of 0 0.1 0 .1 is approximately equal to 0.1, which is quite close to the accurate value, which is 0.0998. 0.1 is not too bad in approximation. And we did that using just the linear approximation of the function close to 0. Now, if we need something better, if we need a better approximation, we can try this third order polynomial. We have which is a great result because look at that. We are able to recover this many digits at this many decimal points, which is quite surprising, using just this very, very simple formula, x minus x cubed divided by 6, we are able to provide very good approximations to this trigonometric function. Okay, so this is a much simpler uh, equation compared to sine of x. Now, you can try as an exercise to 
use k equals 5 and see what happens, see how many digits you will be able to recover. Spoilers, you must be able to recover up to this many decimal points, up to here. So now I will give you an exercise you can try as homework to practice. Exercise number two is the following. Try cosine squared of x to approximate this function at x0 is equal to 0 and use your result. You, you can approximate it up to an order k, whatever you like. It can be 1, 2, 3 and so on whatever you like, and then use your, your, use your polynomial approximation to determine the value of cosine squared of 0 0.1. And you can use a calculator, of course, to uh, compare your result with the accurate result of the calculator. And another exercise, the, there is a little trick I must tell you here. What if I ask you to derive an approximation of the square root of 2, then it makes sense that you take the function f of x is square root of x, you choose a point x0 where it is easy for you to compute the function as well as its derivatives. You can use for example x0 is equal to 1 and then you can derive a polynomial approximation of the square root of x and use that to approximate square root of 2. You can indeed do that as an exercise and try for different values of k. But you should never apply Taylor's approximation theorem at a point where the function is not differentiable. And this function is not differentiable at 0. So you're not allowed to use this point in your uh, approximation. One more exercise. Use the exponential function. Approximate this function at x0 equals 0 with a polynomial of degree 1, 2, 3 and so on. And then use your approximation to find an approximate value of e. I will tell you that the accurate value of e is the following, but you can also look it up online. Now the question is, how, how large should k be? How large should the order of approximation be so that you are able to recover this number, number e, up to this many decimal points? So in today's lecture, we stated um, Taylor's theorem that we can use to approximate complicated functions such as sines, cosines, tangents, or exponentials or logarithms, square, square roots and so on by simpler functions such as polynomials. We are mainly interested of course in linear approximations as we stated before. So the one equation I would like you to keep from today's lecture is the following. This is an equation worth uh, memorizing. If you have a function which is differentiable at the point x0, then you can approximate it close to that point using this approximation here, which is a linear uh, equation. And we will use that later, we will use that in the following video lecture to approximate nonlinear dynamical systems by linear ones. So this much uh, for today. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye. <music>